Yo, 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 Don Mafia, what is going on? Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, Jaboy is back with another video. I figured since I'm just locked in the house, I might as well take full advantage of just continuously sending off some content. You know what I mean? And luckily, um, while there are no sports going on in the world, um, I have not had a difficult issue finding things for us to talk about because there is a lot of news, you know, circulating around the NFL and then, of course, circulating around our team, the Buffalo Bills, too. So I figured just have a little conversation on this nice little Saturday afternoon since the majority of us are just completely locked up away into into our house. Um, you read the article correctly. I wanted to dive into the fact of why I think it is absolutely imperative that the Buffalo Bills address an RB2, or essentially a running back um, that needs to be behind Devin Singletary and really open up our offense. And I'm going to get into those reasons, and then I'm gonna talk about a couple of guys that I would absolutely love to see come to this team, whether or not that it's a last minute free agent move, or whether or not that we pick up one or two names that I'm looking at specifically in the draft during our absolute first pick in the second round. Before I dive into that, I need to give a giant shout out to my recent Patreon contributors. Here we go. Robert Williams the Fourth. Thank you, man. Means the world to me. Elvis Sipek. Thank you, my G. Thank you. And then last but not least, our very first Don Mafia God. $20 goes to Thomas Love. Thank you, my friend. Now, as you guys know, that specific tier, this allows you to come on my show, Let's Talk Bills, which I'm going to be launching in the next week or so. It's basically where I take on a fan, and you come on my show, and we talk bills. You're basically my co-host for one episode of that, so that should be super exciting. Say that you want to further support my channel, then go to patreon.com slash Mitchell. That link is in the description pick a tier and then I'll make sure to give you a bunch of benefits and stuff like that like access to my discord channel blah 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 it really helps out my channel and it's able to help me grow and then eventually make this a career super cool if not then keep watching my videos it's the best thing you can do baby now without further ado let's go ahead let's dive into this specific topic it's funny because soon as when the buffalo bills made that trade for stefan diggs so many of us were seeing sugar plums dancing in our head i'm pretty sure that was a christmas reference probably doesn't apply here but you get where i'm coming from you're imagining josh allen to absolutely go off and then drop you know like a 5,000 yard season 20 25 touchdown passes maybe nine with his legs blah 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 now as much as i can guarantee you that we're going to see improvements as far as the pass attack from the buffalo bills offense is concerned i think with us adding Stephon Diggs to this offense, it's going to make our run game absolutely explode, specifically with Devin Singletary. Uh, but now we come to the question, who's going to be the second guy? Who's going to be this running back by committee that so many teams have been sort of uh, playing with like these past couple of years? As of right now, the Bills only have Taiwan Jones, who was on the Bills, I think, two or three years ago. I mean, he's good. He's not going to be like that, like really like one, two punch that we're looking for. We have TJ Yeldon, who I suppose really hasn't even had an opportunity to prove himself, especially with the Bills. Back when he was in Jacksonville, he showed some glimmers of hope. He really did. But I mean, he just couldn't stay healthy. And then this year with the Buffalo Bills, I mean, he like what? Like, did he like maybe like was he on the field for like what? Like 15 plays total the entire year it was largely dominated by frank Gore and devin singletary of course since we added that weapon with digs defenses are now going to be doing their due diligence they're definitely going to be absolutely terrified that digs is going to be out in the field and then once you also account for the fact that john brown is now going to be going up against cornerback twos you know <laughs> from that point and then cole beasley as well all three of our wide receiving weapons create incredible separation and defenses are going to know that so with that being said that means there's going to be a lot less pressure on josh allen and there's going to be a lot less pressure on stopping the run from those defenses so that's exactly why i know for a fact that devin singletary is going to go off but the missing piece that we absolutely need is a secondary running back behind him now 
I was a huge, huge advocate for Jordan Howard. The Dolphins ended up picking him up instead. So there's a couple of names that I wanted to look at together um, that I think would be a tremendous secondary running back to Devin Singletary and really make our backfield like Super Bowl caliber, right? So number one, you've heard me say this name a million times, Carlos Hyde. Now, he's about 29 years old. He played for the Texans, obviously. And little did you know, Carlos Hyde probably had... I want to say the quietest 1,000-yard season that anybody has ever witnessed in the entire NFL. Like, nobody mentioned it whatsoever, but he did it. He definitely accomplished that. Currently, he is a free agent, and I think with his age, not only would he be able to mentor Devin Singletary, I like his different type of running style. I really like his running style where it's it sort of complements Devin Singletary, where Devin's that guy that can make you miss on the outside and then get those huge chunk plays, and then Carlos Hyde is just like, I'm going to run this ball down your damn throat type running back. Number three would be Lamar Miller specifically when it comes to free agency but the issue with him is is that uh, he's had a tremendously difficult time staying healthy so I'm not necessarily sure that I'm all in right on Lamar Miller but I would be you know 110% down to actually investigate it say that Carlos Hyde and then say that these draft picks that I'm about to list off are not available at this point so now it gets to not only the more affordable option but even the sexier option here really um making sure that in our second round our first pick in the second round we end up going for a running back and there's absolutely two names that i think that we absolutely all need to investigate number one you've heard me say this name time in and time out jonathan taylor yeah guys we all know this guy was an absolute stud it's funny in fact, I was like looking through his stats in preparation to this video and like here, like look at this, like you can see that he was essentially the entire Wisconsin offense for the past two years. Like look at the amount of rush yards that he put up. Look at the amount of attempts. Like this guy is clearly a workhorse with those numbers. It's super, super impressive. And a lot of you are probably thinking like, Dan, like what makes you think that he would be around like right in like the mid second round especially since he's putting up those kind of numbers well several nfl teams as far as the rumors circulating around the draft community have said that uh his shelf life is questionable because he was heavily utilized in college heavily heavily utilized and we all know that running backs really escape their prime once they like pass the age of 26 27 maybe a rarity like you'll get one that still has a bunch of juice in the tank at 29 like that's rare, but several NFL teams are absolutely scared to draft Taylor that early due to like how much Wisconsin used him. And they think that it's going to affect his shelf life in, in the NFL itself. Me personally, I think that it definitely wouldn't hurt because I mean, while he did end up playing for Wisconsin and had that amount of production itself, I still think that we're going to see basically a finished product, a workhorse that's going to be able to make an impact immediately once he steps on the field. So I am 110% down. Let him ride out his rookie contract once we end up signing him in the second. And then say that it doesn't work out toward like his second or third year, we start to see a decline, then we'll move on. But I am absolutely all in on Jonathan Taylor being that next guy. Um, last but not least is going to be Cam Akers. He's probably a more realistic option, especially with where our pick is sitting in the second round, mostly because um, he is an absolute stud and I'm completely fine with it. It's funny because like he would be a perfect fit for the Bills because like I said, well, Devin Singletary is that guy that can like make you miss, like bring it out to the outside and have those crazy ass chunk plays. Cam Akers is that power running back, that power running back. Think like Frank Gore, like in his prime, like not while he was with the Bills, but back when he was in his prime. This is the type of running back that, in my opinion, would complement Devin Singletary incredibly. Now, a lot of teams are not projected to draft him because he's not necessarily a running back that's going to like destroy destroy defenses up the middle especially if that nfl team has a shitty o-line luckily the buffalo bills actually have a very good o-line when it comes to run blocking and 
I think that Cam Akers, so if he can just go on ahead and blast through those gaps and just punish defensive lines, and then finally have Devin Singletary out there and then just like have him go on the outside. Like Akers would be an amazing pickup and I am absolutely fine with all of the names that I honestly just listed. So like I said, Don Mafia, I think that regardless of all the, the new shiny toys we got in the past game, I still largely think that the Buffalo Bills are about to be a run the damn ball type offense again in 2020. And that's why I think it is absolutely so imperative for us to do our due diligence and then find a running back that can complement Devin Singletary so we can have that uh, sort of running back by committee um, going into 2020. I really think that that's something that we should strongly consider. Do me a favor, leave a comment. What do you think? Which one of these names would you most prefer to be on this team? Should we still go through free agency? Should we just focus on the draft? Let me know what you think. Really, really want to hear your opinions on that. One last quick announcement. I am still doing that ticket giveaway. I'm going to be announcing the winner the day of the first preseason game once the schedule comes out, obviously. The only thing you got to do is you have to follow me on Twitter and you have to screenshot you being subscribed to my YouTube channel and DM me. Um, as soon as you do that, I'm going to put your name in like this giant spreadsheet and I'm just going to keep on collecting, collecting, collecting. And then I'll do a random drawing, like maybe like an hour or two before the first preseason game. So um, should be exciting. You'll win those tickets uh, right to the home opener. Who doesn't want that? Besides that, guys, thank you for tuning in to yet another edition of the Don Mafia Report. Do me a favor. Stay healthy. Make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure you take care of your family. And above all else, let's go Buffalo. Buffalo.